welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. Promised, said that I wasn't going to be streaming for a while, but you know how it is. Sometimes things happen, sometimes I want to talk about it, and sometimes I just have to straight up do a whole podcast about it, even though my streaming quality is absolute shit, because I'm sharing the internet with several other people. Um... As you could probably tell by the title, um, this is going to be a talk about unity and all the fuckery that's been going on, at least from my perspective. For those who don't know me or who are perhaps even new to the channel, my name is Pop-Tart. I am a streamer from New Zealand. I play video games and drink coffee and try to be... not, not try to... Lee, 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 try to not be a depressed little bitch. God, words, how do they work? So... Just a bit of a disclaimer. Um, there is a lot to go over in this. Um, the original script, the, well, the original idea I had for a script has been compressed down as much as I can for the sake of brevity. Um, but the specifics on exactly what I'm covering are going to be very, very brief and just in broad strokes. And I say that because... Um, to understand Unity, we're going to have to talk about a bunch of stuff, and those who are really into this side of the in gaming industry uh, will probably go, well, why didn't you cover point X, Y, Z, or this niche little thing, or why porting games over from Xbox to PC never really works that well, and they, you always have performance issues. While they are relevant in part to this conversation, we will be not paying attention to them, or where we, when we are paying attention to them, it'll be very, very briefly and only to provide a greater understanding of um, certain things we're talking about in relation to Unity and video game engines. In addition, uh, this podcast, well, I should say this presentation, I should call it, really should start thinking of a better name for the sorts of things, um, while they are researched, and they are researched well, and I have done my best job to be as accurate as I can with the facts, and as neutral as I can on certain points, uh, this is just an opinion, it is not objective fact, if that is something you're after, this is not the place to be for that sort of thing, um, and although I have researched every single point I can as accurately as I can, um, this... Um, for legal reasons, I'm obliged to inform you that this should not be watched by anyone at any point in time for any reason. Just because I know that as charged this conversation is, someone's probably going to come after me, so I should just preemptively save my own ass. Um, however, if you are interested in specific parts of what I'm talking about and you would like me to expand on them, or you go, hey, I'm curious about dot 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 point that you made, I would like to know more. Uh, flick me a DM, I'll make a note of it, I'll try to touch base on it. Um, only reason I'm not doing it now is because, again, a lot of ground to cover in a very short amount of time, so I can't cover absolutely all of the things. So, a video game engine... Um, in very, very, very broad strokes, takes several different assets that people create, either the audio that we hear, the models that we see, or the scripts that have been written and recorded by voice actors. It takes all of these different things and glues them together with um, code. This process... Um, has been very well refined over the years. It's gone from the days of coding in basic where you just opened up a text file and wrote line after line after line after line of code that when put together and shipped out, created a program. It's gone from that to through several different variations of both using just a straight text program to now implementing sound, 3D assets, and so on and so forth. Um, 
started off with one of these. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is one of the first iterations of at least a publicly available uh, game engine. This is um, Unreal Editor. Um, it was released very early on by the team who made Unreal massively popular and set the standard for how game engines were developed going forward. Um, but enough of speaking in broad strokes, we're here to talk about Unity. Now, Unity um, has been responsible for a number of games you've either played or heard of or seen someone else play. Um, and there's very good reason for that. Uh, the core philosophy of Unity is to, and this is quoting from the developers, is to democratize um, video game development so that the idea of using a video game engine um, is has goes from, oh, it's just for big studios to, oh, now it's available to little, in, um, well, sorry, let's not be mean here. It, um, it takes video game engines and then the objective behind Unity is to make it available to indie devs, smaller studios who can't necessarily afford to make their own game engine and just make it as readily available as you possibly can. Um, the reason Unity is so popular is originally it was developed for use on Apple computers. Um, and I bring that up because whenever something is developed specifically for Apple, it's designed with ease of mind and use because that's the philosophy of Apple. They want to make technology as usable as possible for as many people as possible. Um, so it was originally, um, developed by a company that actually wasn't a part of Apple. There has been some confusion in that regard as to does Unity own Apple? Is it at all owned by Apple at all? all it's, that was never the case. It is not, while it has done a lot of work for Apple specifically, at least in its early li lifetime, um, it was actually developed back in 2004 by Over the Edge Entertainment, which was a, which was a studio in Denmark, um, However, due to business decisions, uh, they decided to rebrand um, as Unity Technologies. Um, as a result of that, um, it's developed many different games um, and different programs like the part that even I use now. Um, Vido2, for example, is very heavily based off of um, Unity. Um, and it's also being used by Google as well. Um, if you don't know, Google uses it for the... Um, what is the specific name of it? Google uses it for their stuff as well, for developing um, artificial intelligence. And it's also been used to make a couple of movies as well. And the whole reason why that's possible, even though it was not never really intended to make programs, it was just intended to make video games, is, like I said... Um, the core philosophy is to make game dev game development as accessible as you possibly can. Um, as a result of that, people very clearly found the intended limits of Unity and thought, huh, can we do other stuff like not games? And then that led on to uh, VideoTube, animations, Google using it for the DeepMind Institute. H hundreds of different use cases have now been developed um, up and around of Unity just because of how easy it is to use. And a couple of things that make it really attractive is what's called visual scripting. So if you've ever seen people use something like Scratch at a like primary school or you've seen kids use um, that program where they drag and drop different boxes of code, that is actual... That is like actual code that they're playing with. They're not just pl moving blocks around in a video game. They are quite literally writing code. And that idea of you dragging and dropping different boxes of code around in this program and then linking them together is built... Well, the reason it was bring brought into Unity initially is... Um, 
the people who design certain visual aspects of the game oftentimes wanted to test their model and to do that um, before it was brought in to Unity uh, in the form of visual scripting um, took a lot of time and a lot of coding and a lot of testing by programmers when all the de uh, designers really wanted to do was to have it where their model moved a couple of pixels to the left. Um, as a result of this, it's gone beyond just testing um, individual models and it's now allowed people who may not be as knowledgeable with code to jump in and start creating certain parts of the game. Um, also, because Unity as it stands now allows people to work either in multiple places within a building or multiple places within a year and then all connect back to one central database. You can have many people working on one game doing that exact same thing which allows you to more easily grow your um, user... I want to say user base but it sounds like the wrong word but I'm going to say it anyway. It allows you to grow the amount of people who can work on a particular title who may not have um, the ability to create line after line after line of code. Um, and you might be thinking, well, is that all it can do? Can you not just write new code for Unity and just drag and drop it in the same way? Well, actually you can, which is another strength of Unity, because you can have an entire team of people whose strength might not be coding, but they can do visual scripting, and then you'll have maybe one or two people who know um, C+, who can create um, individual blocks of code, or as Unity refers to it, as behaviors, and then have it where everyone can link back to those blocks and then use them throughout the game development as necessary. Um, and while you might think that, you know, it is, it might sound like a perfect program, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that when a game is developed, it is error-free. There have been a non-zero amount of programs that have, well, programs, I should say games, have been you know, subject accurate. There have been a non-zero uh, amount of games that have come up with really weird errors, either because code hasn't been connected properly or written correctly, and they've tried to run it, and the game has just said, no, nah, wrong. Um, it is still possible to fail... Um, it is just, but the reason it's so um, popular is because it's ease of use allows people to overcome these hurdles way, um, way better than what was traditionally possible up until that point. In fact, so easy is it to make games in Unity that the sheer volume of games that, at least as far as certain gamers are concerned, releasing onto Steam has been so subpar that they, at one point, gamers actually went, went to the then head of Unity back in 2015 by the name of, and I'm going to mutilate his last name, um, John Ricatelio, I think that's how you pronounce it, and said, hey, you fucked up. This program is so easy to use, we're getting a shitload more substandard games on there. You should do something about it. And I am heavily paraphrasing this because this isn't word for word what he said, but his emotional response to this was, yeah, no shit. The point of Unity is to make game development through a game engine accessible to everyone. It is what, and while it may, while you may have a lot of quote, substandard, well, I, again, that's the wrong term of phrase, well, you may have a lot of, as you say, substandard games on Steam, the game is, the platform, at least as far as I'm concerned, or the game, or Unity as a whole, is working as intended as we designed, so that's just the way it's going to be. And there are... A hell of a lot of other benefits to using Unity, unlike some game engines, um, which I won't mention again for the sake of brevity. It has one of the largest, um, a, a largest library of platforms that it can develop for in the market. So you could create one game 
and with certain tweaks here and there, uh, you could have it where you could um, redevelop it and repackage that for um, several different platforms. Obviously, certain platforms needing certain individual tweaks here and there. Um, but it wouldn't be impossible to do that, and it would be a hell of a lot easier than just recreating the game in an entirely different program. So, the, the point I'm trying to make up to this point is, it's not so much that Unity as a program is broken. It is not. It is a very, very, very good example of how a video game engine can be made and implemented. And it's not even that it occasionally breaks. I mean, while there are situations, like I said before, where this is not impossible to create bad code in Unity, um, it's not even that. The problem, at least currently, is how they've gone about charging people to use it. See, up until this point, if... Um, well, let's, let's not even go that far. Let's take a step back and ask why they charge the way that they do. See, uh, if you were to go on Steam and buy a game, you'd only ever pay one price, that would be it, and you'd never pay anything again for the sake of using uh, that video game. Sounds great, right? And that is. Um, the problem with a program such as Unity, where you're creating an entire game virtually from scratch to be exported to multiple different platforms and you're also connecting to a central database and you're working with people all across the world and then you're implementing custom code and then that code will probably have to be reworked a little bit every time an individual platform has a update to it that causes you to have to rework the code and so on and so on and so on. Basically what I'm trying to say is what goes into making Unity function as a program um, is a lot more involved than, um, say, a video game. Because you are literally dealing with something that, that is the infrastructure of creating everything that you enjoy as a gamer. And to create, not only create that, but maintain it as technology evolves does take time. Um, and development and then redevelopment and teams of people and it does involve a non-zero amount of money which is why um when you're dealing with something as complex as unity it makes sense for them to step away from ch charging you a one-off fee and instead charging you a subscription per person per year and for the most part people were fine with that there is nothing inherently wrong um the problem is when what they're wanting to do now oh let's take a step back so even though they're charging as much as they are per person per year um the problem is although that has been accepted by everyone from small devs to medium devs to large scale devs um the problem is when it comes to releasing a game. Um, there is no real charge beyond that, but because Unity, for its own reasons, are wanting to create more profit because you know they are a company that is their job, um, they've turned around and said, every time your game, um, once your game has had over $200,000 in revenue and surpasses 200000 um, installations they are going to charge you a fee per installation going forward um, and there is no clear reason as to why they are charging that beyond profit now I have my own speculations as to why they may want additional money beyond um, a cash grab but until they release a statement I don't really think it's appropriate to comment any more beyond that um, but the industry reaction to Unity doing this so far has not exactly been positive because they see through this as just a straight up cash grab. It's not, you know, like no one's disillusioned by this. Everyone knows that they are doing this for the sake of getting money. 
and people have been not violently upset but they have been upset on a scale that very rarely happens at least in um, modern times and so vivid is a reaction to industry that um, ReLogic, the storyo behind storyo storyo studio get it right uh, ReLogic, the studio behind terraria said we don't appreciate that unity is doing this so what we're going to do is that we're going to net, donate 200k to two indie game stu studios that are creating their own game engine for industry um to help fund a less less aggressive version of a game engine that will hopefully not do this and uphold what they believe to be more um that will uphold a more virtual virtuous version of the software um in addition to that when i was scrolling through um unity as well there has been a user that um, said that there is a section of the new TOS that allows them to make changes to this going forward and just straight up not tell anyone. Um, and yeah, it's they pretty much as a result of this and not being very clear as to why they're charging it, um, they, they've received massive backlash from industry to a point where the only thing that they've done so far is backpedal that's it they've not undone the decision they've not changed anything going forward they are literally just going oh we are going to change certain parts of it um and that that's it that's the only response that they've done and this exact tweet was copied off of their twitter page um prior to the recording of this video um, and what i think is quite funny is the still top comment at that time was by asmund gold <laughs> Which I think is quite fucking hilarious, to be honest. So, what does this mean for Unity going forward? It is... It's kind of hard to say. Early speculation is their stock is going to take a hit. Because um, usually when stuff like this happens and there has been a massive um, upset to a company who um, has upset this many fans... It, their stock prices generally do take a hit, but are they going to shut down? Is this going to be the last we see of Unity? Are people going to stop using it? Probably not. And the reason for that is Unity's um, use in both the gaming industry and beyond has been so well received and still so widely used that it is unlikely that this is going to shift people from a moral standpoint um, in such a way where they shift away from Unity because there are very few options outside of this program um, for them to do what they do as companies. Um, and it is also very unlikely that they will not... Um, well, it's very unlikely that they will not move forward with this policy change. Like I said... Um, Unity Technologies as a company, their objective is to make profit. So it is very, very likely that they will either shift forward with the policy as it is intended, or they will shift forward with a variation of it. Um, but time will tell. It is still early days as far as um, a decision is, and there has been no uh, response from tweet as of the time of this recording. Um, that would indicate that they would not go ahead with it. So the only thing that I can say is if you are someone who develops games for industry, if you are someone who um, uses Unity or learns with Unity or uses it as part of your day-to-day -day life or know someone that does or plays games that are based on Unity, the only thing you can really do is take pause and see if this fits with your moral compass and if it doesn't it may be time to move on does this mean that as a result of this going forward if they do decide to um, implement these charges per installation as well as the per year fee per developer or um, well, individual developer um, or user of this program 
does this mean that it is going to be passed on to us in the terms of an increase of price per game? Quite possibly, yes. It is hard to say what that increase would look like, um, but it is very likely that that is going to be the case. And another concern from industry is this increase will make it harder for them to turn a profit, which means that their bottom line will be affected as a result. Now, Unity claims that as a result of having it where the they will not charge you per installation um, until you reach 200,000k in profit or in income based off of that game and then 200,000 installations. Although they have sent that as a benchmark, I think that it is naive to think that a little company can't be affected by that. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but there was a iPhone app created a while back called Flappy Bird that while it may not have been um, made on Unity, it was made just by one guy and it was a very basic game and it was so popular to a point where the last I heard about a developer is he had to actually drop um, development on the game and sell Flappy Bird off to an investor because the stress of of that many people downloading that many copies of the game and trying to get in contact with them was far too much for him to deal with. So it is still possible in this day and age to quite easily break that benchmark, at least in my opinion. But for now, I think we would be... I think it is advisable for us to just take pause and observe the situation going forward because nothing is currently set in stone as for myself my name is pop tart this has been coffee time with pop tart if you want to keep up to date with what i'm doing when i'm streaming if i get back to streaming or who i'm streaming with you can you're more than welcome to follow me on socials i have the little socials in the bottom corner of my screen but if you're just listening to this in the background i am on twitter.com as forward slash pop tart vt i'm on tiktok.com as forward slash at pop tart vt or i'm on youtube at youtube.com forward slash at pop tart vt and until i see you guys again goodbye for now